Good morning, Year 4, and welcome to Wednesday's Maths lesson. I'd like you to look at the mental arithmetic questions on the screen and pause the video to have a go, please. Welcome back, Year 4. I'm now going to reveal the answers and I'd like you to mark them, please. So we can see that we're still doing number bonds to 20 and number bonds to 100. If I was thinking that 100 subtracts something is 17, then I can reverse uh, that calculation. And if I'm going to do 100 subtract 17, it's actually going to give me the answer that would go in this area here. So 100 take away 10 is 90, take away 7 more is going to give me 83. Okay, and that's about knowing um, that, that I can um, reverse these and complete them in any order. Now, 100 take away 64. Now, a common error that I've seen is people put in the answer 46. However, if I was to add 64 and 46, I'm actually going to get 110. So that tells me that I've actually um, 10 too many just here. So the answer should be 36. Okay, so 100 subtract 60 is 40. Take away four more is going to give you the answer 36. Once you've marked your answers, then we're ready to move on today, please. If you're going to do the Sapphire Challenge, then uh, I'd like you to start shortly and you're going to be focusing on 10 more or 10 less than a number. If I take a number here such as 56 then I can see that 10 less is uh, I'm, I'm going to be taking away 10 so I'm going to end up with 40 as opposed to 50 but my six ones are going to stay the same. So 56 subtract 10 is 46. Equally 56 Add 10, I'm just increasing my 10s. You can see that I've done that here. I've gone from 5 tens to 6 tens. So what I've now ended up with by adding 10 is 66, and my 1s stay the same. Just be aware, if you have to cross through the um, 100s boundary, then you, visually we can actually replace that with a square, which is 10, uh, uh, 10 lots of 10 cubes or 10 lots of these uh, sticks of 10. So if I have 94, I have 10 more, I'm going to end up with 104. And I've got 100 uh, cubes here. I've got 10 lots of 10. Each stick uh, contains 10 cubes. But equally, I could replace the whole of these 10 sticks with one square, which also represents 100. So you've got a series of challenges based on this today, Sapphire. So I'd like you to start your work now. Everybody else today, we're going to be building on what we did yesterday. Yesterday, we were dividing one and two digit numbers by 10. Today, we're going to be dividing one and two digit, so one and two digit numbers by 100. Again, we're going to use the place value grid to help us. And we are going to be applying uh, our understanding to some problems. So unfortunately, Zerg is still around and he's still managing to shrink those toys from Toy Story. Again, everything has become smaller. However, today, what you should notice is that everything hasn't just become 10 times smaller, it's become 100 times smaller. If I started off with Sarge being 20 centimetres, and obviously I think yesterday he was two centimetres, but the different versions of toys, we, we can get different sizes um, as, as you well know. So this Sarge, 20 centimetres in height. If I was to divide 20 by 10, then I would get to two centimetres. But then I divide by 10 again to get to 0.2 centimetres. By dividing by 10, 
and dividing by 10 again. Okay, so I've divided by 10 here to get to 2, then divided by 10 again to get 0 0.2. Effectively, I'm dividing by 100. 90, 100 times smaller is 0 0.9. 120, well, if I made it 10 times smaller, we know that that would be 12 centimeters based on yesterday's work. And if I make it 10 times smaller again, it's going to be 1.2 centimeters. I wonder in your head, or perhaps pause the video, can you just work out 280 centimeters? What is it 10 times smaller? What is it 10 times smaller again? In other words, what is it 100 times smaller? The answer is 2.8 centimetres. Obviously, 10 times smaller would be 28 centimetres. 10 times smaller again, 2.8 centimetres. So we need to become very skilled at making things ourselves 100 times smaller. So let's just have a look at, similar to yesterday, how this might look like if we had some counters. So if I take... 20 centimeters then first of all then at the top here I'm going to draw two counters to represent my 20 two two counters in the tens column if I divide by 10 then everything moves one place to the right as we know from yesterday but if I divide by 100 everything moves two places to the right so my two counters are now in the tenths column, meaning I've got two tenths. If we think of that as digits then please, or, we, or write that using digits, if I've got two in the tens column, I'm going to need my place value holder here, so I can see that I've got 20. And if I divide by 10, my two have moved to here, but I'm dividing by 100, so it's going to move two places to the right. We've always said that we cannot have um, a number after the decimal point without having something before it so I need a place value holder here so the answer is 0 0.2 so 20 divided by 100 is 0 0.2 and that's what we can see here if I take 120 centimeters let's represent that with counters let's do that one down here so I've got 100 so I need one counter in my hundreds column I've still got 20 so I need two tens in my tens column and nothing in my ones column. I'm going to divide by 100. So everything moves two places to the right. That's the trick today, please. Two places to the right, not one place to the right. So I'm going to go one, two places to the right. And uh, my two counters here, I'm going to go one, two places to the right. Some of you might be thinking, why do we show this in counts as well? It's just another visual way of showing what is happening to our numbers. And although maybe some parents might be a little bit confused by the fact we use counters, it's something we do a lot in school. So hopefully the rest of us um, are clear with that. So let's have a look then. I had 120. So let's just write 120 into my place value grid. And I'm going to divide it by 100. So my one is going to move one, two places to the right. My two is going to move one, two places to the right. I could actually move my zero, but uh, after the tenths here, zero hundredths or a blank hundredths is exactly the same. So my answer is 1.2. Had I written 1.20, that would still be correct. But effectively, it's uh, exactly the same as 1.2. 1.20, 1.2, exactly the same. So that's how we're going to make things 100 times smaller. Let's just have a very quick look then, just at uh, a couple of examples that I can see on a chart here. So just don't forget today, 140 centimetres, dividing by 100, my answer is going to be 1.4 centimetres and today you're not always going to have centimetres we have got some measurements in metres three metres divided by a hundred is naught point naught three metres and those of us that are good at converting have a go in your head can you convert that to uh, centimetres 
we know that actually that would be three centimeters. Okay, there's up to 99 centimeters here before we get back to our whole meter. So just a very, very final quick look then. So what I want you to do is remember from yesterday that we can show something using counters, but we can also just show it using digits. Okay, so um, we could also show both on the place value grid. So if I've got two, I need two ones in here, and dividing by 100, one, two places to the right. One, two places to the right. And on the same place value grid, I could write down that I have two and moving, dividing by 100, it's moved two places to the right. Obviously now I've got nothing here, so I'm gonna need what we call a place value holder, which is my zero. And again, as we've said lots of times now, I can't have numbers beyond the decimal point with nothing here. But because this is blank, I need another place value holder. So two divided by 100 is 0 0.02. And if I've chosen to do that as meters, then my answer would be in meters. Lots of us know that this also means two centimeters, 0 0.02 meters, okay? But I don't have to draw the counters. Again, it's just another visual aid. I could have actually started on my place value grid by just putting two and dividing by 100. So my two moves two places to the right, put in my place value holders, but I would be expecting you to show this on your place value grids for each question. Now, just before you start then today, let's just look at 14. If I write it in my place value grid without any counters, as we've looked at counters quite a lot now, 14. If I move it here, just very quickly, what mistake have I made? That's correct, I've only divided by 10. I need to have moved each digit two places to the right. One, two, one, two. And what am I missing off my number? Yes, because I've got a decimal place here, I can't have anything, uh, sorry, because I've got numbers after my decimal point, I can't leave this blank, so I need my place value holder, which is zero. Okay, so if I've got 14 centimeters, um, or, or let's say 14 meters in this case, if I had 14 meters divided by 100, then I'm gonna end up with 0 0.14 meters. Okay, which lots of us know would be 14 centimeters. Okay, I'm just gonna show you now um, your work for today. In terms of today's work then, we've got the Sapphire Challenge there. Uh, the Bronze Challenge, I can see that uh, I've got four challenges to complete and I need to show my working four times on the place value grids. And then I've got another four to do and the place value grids for these ones are on the next page. And then finally, I've got another four to do and I've got place value grids uh, to show my working in for those four questions. If at all you're not feeling confident, then please start with the bronze challenge. It doesn't matter if you normally do the silver, it's about being accurate today. If you are feeling confident, then silver and gold, we've put your challenges together today and you've got a series of 10 questions, but use the 10 place value grids to show you're working before you complete the table above. You've then got a similar grid to yesterday where unfortunately I have made some mistakes. You need to work out which of my questions are correct and which are incorrect. This is quite a challenge here today. I'm gonna to see if you can work this out, but the tip I'm gonna give you is to use the inverse operation. And there are the answers to all of the questions. Please enjoy your maths today. Good luck. Look forward to speaking to you again tomorrow. Thank you, year four.